all of the pieces for this coffered ceiling are going to be pre-assembled and cut to rough length according to my reflected ceiling plan. So let me show you what's going on here. I have all these lengths. I have ceiling joists running in this direction. So first of all, this is actually a um, load-bearing beam that's covered in sheetrock. So my layout is coming off of this load-bearing beam. This can't be moved, this one row. Everything else is measured off of that and the spacing here on this room. I am doing the rough assembly of the three-quarter pine boards here. And then once it's glued and nailed, I am then going to hit it with my planer to smooth the edges. I am now prepping all of the pieces to be painted. They have been puttied to fill in all the nail holes, and now I'm doing the finished sanding. Everything's been prepped, and now the raw wood, bare wood, is ready for a primer. And I am using Zinzer brand Bullseye 123 wood primer, all, well, all purpose primer. It's used for other materials. But before I do any painting, I'm wiping every single piece down with tack cloths. And you can buy these in individual packs or big packs like I get them. All I need to do for the first coat is two quick passes. From this point forward, the video will be me installing all the pieces. Here I am removing the sheetrock from the load bearing beam. I may have forgotten to bring my jack stand with me, but my head works just as well. You can see here how everything is anchored. I first install a 2x6 screwed into all the ceiling joists on every location. And then the 3 quarter pine goes over top of that and screws into the sides.
at all of the intersecting points to the exterior walls where the existing crown molding is, I'm carefully laying out where all of these coffers are going to intersect and marking the crown and cutting it out with my multi-tool. That way, when I install all of the coffers, there's no gap between the existing crown and the coffer so that I can just cope the new trim right to the existing. If you guys are liking the video so far, please like and subscribe, and I really appreciate it. And I hope you continue watching. I had to plane down a small section here where the two intersecting points were slightly different heights. So I'm just using my hand planer to take the edge down a little bit to level it out. And then I will sand it flat and hit it with paint. I am now using a jigsaw with a coping foot to do all the coping for the ends of the crown. And I'm not getting super close with that because then I'm coming back with my grinder with a sanding disc to fine tune the profile. I'm now installing one of the last pieces of crown and I almost have a mini heart attack because it almost falls on my face, but it fits good. This is how I make my patches for the sheetrock on the existing hi-hat lights. I'm just cutting a circle 
the same diameter as the hole plus an inch and a half all the way around. That way I have a tape joint that I can mud to without having to cut a larger hole or add any sort of anchor behind this to hold it in place. I'm using a 60 minute quick set mud for all these patches and right here it started to dry a little bit but it was still workable. Uh, preferably you would want it to be a little thinner than this. Now all I'm doing with the patches that I made is pushing them in very gently into the hole making sure it's a snug fit squeezing out the excess mud and then going back over it with another skim coat of mud around the entire circle. This will get multiple coats. I do at least three. I consider this to be the taping portion and then two other light skim coats after this. And every coat that you put on, you want to make sure that you feather it out just a little bit further to overlap the existing. And you also prevent having a bump in the ceiling where the paper overlaps the existing sheetrock. Here's what it looks like with all of the trim installed and all of the nail holes have been puttied. The next step will be to get everything prepped for paint and start spraying. For this paint, I am using a Sherwin-Williams cashmere, just the basic extra white base coat color. This is a medium luster finish and it only requires one coat. I'm only going to wait a couple hours after painting everything before I start pulling off all of my masking. If you wait too long to pull off the masking when the paint is fully dried, you risk peeling the paint off of the trim as well. If you wait too long, then you actually have to cut the paint if you have a heavy buildup of overspray with a knife to break it so that you don't risk peeling the paint. Thank you guys for watching and please subscribe and like to see more videos like this.